Hey, what's going on YouTube? Sean or Mustang09 bringing you another video. And today is all about prep for TX2K. So what we have coming up is a road trip down to Houston, which is about four hours for me. So I wanna make sure that the car's running good. And obviously when we're down there, we may be driving um, a little, uh, how do we say this? We're gonna be driving like we're in Mexico a little bit. So I wanna make sure that she's at her tip top shape. She's performing properly. So that's gonna be an oil change, a replacement air filter, and then uh, I think soon we're gonna have to pay, take these off and put my other wheels back on. But uh, not today, because I wanna go out and get some more pictures and stuff with it before I do that. Oil change, you guys have seen me do it before. Mobile One, everything, 5W20, eight quarts for the Mustang. And then we have this. A lot of you may be asking, why did I just buy a new filter and not a cleaning kit? I bought a new filter for two reasons. One, because the cleaning kit was like 20 bucks cheaper, so I might as well have just spent the other 20 and got a second filter. And then in the future, I will have two filters, so that way I can take one off and clean it and have it sitting aside while I have another one already clean and just swap them out. That way I always have a filter on the car and I don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry because I think it takes like a day or two for the filter to dry after you clean it. I can't wait to show you the one that's on the car because you can see how red this is and the one on the car is like black. Not good. On top of changing out my oil and my air filter, I'm also gonna be draining the oil catch can that's on here. For those of you that don't know, I have a Moroso oil catch can, and it's been a minute since I've drained that thing, so I know it's pretty full, I'm gonna have to drain it. And what's kept me from draining it is on the end of the drain, there's a like a vacuum cap line, or a vacuum cap, and I'm gonna have to cut it off because it seems to have heat shrunk to that drain. And I was having a hard time finding a replacement size, but shout out to Moroso, they're sending me a couple of extras. That way if I ever have this issue again, I'll be able to fix it. In the meantime, I was able to source some from AutoZone, and I, I think they're the right size, so hopefully those will work out. Before we get to changing the oil, I better lay some cardboard down on this brand new garage floor, because if I spill it, my wife's gonna kill me. You guys can probably tell this box has big staples in it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole flap off. Now we're good. Time to pull the car. These ramps make life so much easier. And now that I have the airlift, they just go right on. It is all dirty. Look at this air filter. Okay, look guys, that's the uh, that's the difference there. I'm a terrible, terrible, terrible owner. I'm so sorry, bro. We'll take care of you. We'll get this ugly air filter off of you. We'll put a new one on. <laughs> Yay, not too bad, not too bad. Just right there. Ah! All righty, while that is draining, we're gonna go ahead and pop the new filter on, take the old one off. That way we can let all that come out of the, the oil pan. No. Y'all, I need a toolbox so bad. Yuck. Actually uh, quite disappointed in myself that I let it get to that. Uh, not good, not good practice there. Don't let it get this bad. Keep it this color. I install mine with that silver downwards. That way it just looks a little cleaner from the top half. One good tip is to start the worm gear so that it's already tight a little bit. That way when it goes to slide it on, it's not moving around on you. Easy as that, new filter is on. Looking 100 times better. It's not going anywhere. It actually moves the whole piece. Uh, and you can see the worm gear is easy, or the worm clamp, I call it a worm gear. Worm clamp's easily accessible. Clean looking air filter now. Earlier when I was talking about the catch can, here it is. As you can see here, it's got this little cap on the end and that seems to be like heat shrinked to this. So I'm gonna have to cut it off with a razor blade in order to drain it. Down. Now, as you can tell, we have a window so that that drain plug will be able to fit in there and just drip oil down into this and we have somewhere to catch our oil. And once it's out, we'll just dump this into the oil drain catch underneath the car and go dispose of it at the local parts store. AutoZone usually has a tank that you can dump your stuff into for free. So now we'll slide this down in there. As you can see, I simply slide the bottle over it and that drain sits in there. So it didn't really seem like there was a massive amount in there. But it did drain, so that's a good thing. 
But once again, the reason why there's probably not a whole lot in there is because I really don't put that many miles on the car and in order for it to catch that much, you have to actually drive the car. So even though it's been a significant amount of time that has passed, not a significant amount of miles have passed. So that's probably standard for my oil changes is I think it's like that much in the bottom, but once it's done draining, we'll pull it out and I'll show you guys. That's a, that's a pretty good amount. It's to the bottom of the label here. When I called Moroso, they said this was a 3 8 fitting, and so I got this mixed box of caps, and it's saying that this black one in here is a 3 8. They don't look like the same size to me, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah, I don't know that that's the right size. I'm gonna try and work this one on and see, but we may need to get another size. No luck with getting that one on, so I'm gonna have to do some shopping around and wait or wait until the Moroso one comes in. I, it says 3 8 I'm thinking that's half inch for sure. So if I can find one locally, then I will do that. I've checked AutoZone, Advanced Auto. I need to check O'Reilly's and uh, maybe like Tractor Supply or Home Depot may have something that's a little larger in size. In the meantime, the oil is done draining from the pan, so I'm gonna put the plug back in, move the oil catch up and take the old filter off and then we'll put the new filter on and fill it up with oil. Okay, here we go. A little dirtier that time around. Now we're gonna get a rag and wipe up the stuff that hit the cross member and all that over here so there's not oil constantly dripping under the car. Now we'll just reverse the process that we did to drain the oil. Now it's time for the big dog. Bada bing, bada boom, easy as that, you are done guys. Once again, it's an eight mil for the flap under the car and a 15 mil for the drain plug. And it's really, really a simple process, guys. Just make sure you're checking for the right things that one, there's no metal or anything in oil. You can check the drain plug. Usually it has a magnet on the end. Mine was clear. When you're putting the oil filter back on, make sure you coat it with some uh, oil on the ring so that it seals properly. And to that point, make sure you're checking for that ring from the old oil cap or the old, sorry, the old oil filter, because sometimes that'll stick on there. I've had it happen to me one time and I didn't check and I was leaking oil. Not significantly, but a drop here, a drop or two here or there. I do want to make a quick note. One, I'm not sponsored by Mobile One. It's just the oil I've always used. Uh, and two, that when you go to dump your oil, do it the right way. Don't dump it on the ground. That is illegal. You don't want to do that. Like I said before, most auto parts stores, I, I believe it's a law that if they sell oil, they have to be able to recycle the oil. So uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, all of that should have a catch in the back where you can go in and they'll let you drain it for free. Alrighty boys, that's gonna do it for this episode. I know it was short and it's real basic stuff, changing your oil, but I just kinda wanted to give you guys a heads up of what I'm doing before I go out to TX2K. Now, this isn't something that I do before every road trip. One thing I do do is I check the air pressure and the tires. I do check the dipstick to make sure that there's plenty of oil in my cars before I take a road trip. It just so happens that it's been um, a good amount of time since I've changed my oil. I believe it's been, oh, five or six months, which for me is okay because I honestly, I don't drive this car very much. And the times I do drive, it's pretty rough. I think I have one drift event on this and then a couple of cruises. So with as often as I beat on the car when I am driving it, it uh, it's okay if I shorten the life of the oil and go ahead and change it a little more frequently because unlike most people that when they daily drive their car, they're just driving it to and from work, to the grocery store, and they're not abusing it like we do our cars. Uh, and in a performance car, I think it's important to change the oil on a more frequent basis, even though the container says 10,000 or 15,000 miles. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Mobile One, it is full synthetic, 5W20 is what we use in these cars, and never had any issues with it, and the car runs great. We'll be at TX2K, so if you're going, hit me up. I want to see you guys. It's going to be sweet. As you can tell, I'm kind of getting over this head cold kind of thing right now, and it's on day four, so I think I'm getting the tail end of it. I feel much better than I did two days ago, thank God, because it's just, I'm, I'm so over it. I hate being sick. I'm real nasally and congested, and I sound like, like a weirdo, so I apologize. So thanks for bearing with me. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you got a question about how I do anything in my videos or something you want to see next. 
hit me up on that. Um, I love hearing you guys' ideas and I love talking to you and chatting with you in the comment section of all my videos. So if you haven't, follow me on social media. I'm pretty active there. Uh, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, all of the above. I love seeing you guys come over there and support me. Um, more on a day in and day out basis, I can keep you guys up to date on how life's going and different things like that. Quick, before we go, I do have more parts coming for the car. Don't tell my wife. It is suspension components for the rear. I'm getting lower control arms, relocation brackets, upper control arm, relocation, and an upper control arm mount, as well as a drive shaft safety loop because if you're running quicker than I think a 1399 or something ridiculous like that, which any car off the factory lot is gonna run that basically. Um, you have to have a drive shaft safety loop from what my local track tells me. So I want to make sure I'm in compliance. I would hate to get out there, pay to race, and then they'd be like, oh, you don't have a stupid little part. And so uh, I've never had them look underneath the car before in the past, but now that I'm getting a little more serious into it, I want to take the necessary safety precautions and uh, just not only for others and just because the track recommends it, but for my safety. Um, if anything were to happen, I wanna make sure that those proper steps have been taken. So, long ending. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. I, I certainly appreciate it. And I thank you guys once again for watching. But we'll see you guys back here next time. Thanks so much for all the great feedback. I do appreciate it. We'll catch you guys back here next time on Mustang 09 for the next episode. Take it easy, boys. Mm -hmm.